Recap in minutes. In today's video, we will be enjoying a war slash drama film, entitled Letter from Iwo Jima. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. The movie begins in the year 2005. The archaeologists are exploring tunnels on Iwo Jima when they come upon something in the ground that they believe is an artifact. The setting then returned to Iwo Jima in 1944, where the action took place. On the island, Private First Class Saigo and his company are busy working excavating beach trenches. It is quite possible that they are preparing to dig their own grave. Meanwhile, Lieutenant General Tatamiki Kuribayashi arrives at the garrison by aircraft to assume command of the forces. Admiral Oshugi extends a warm greeting to him. A brief tour of the island was provided by Admiral Oshugi's soldiers to the general, who promptly began an inspection of the island's fortifications while strolling beside the admiral. When General Tatamachi arrived at the mountain, he watched Private First Class Saigo and his comrade Kashiwara being beaten by Captain Tanita for making unpatriotic statements. The general intervenes and rescues the two. To begin excavating subterranean fortifications into Mount Suribachi, the general instructs the troops, who are then instructed to take a proper rest from their labors. General Tatamachi noted that the soldiers were fatigued and had not had a chance to relax in a long time. Captain Tanita, on the other hand, complied with the general's orders and sent the troops to have their break and meal on the field. Saigo and his buddies are gushing about how wonderful the general is and how effective he is as a leader. Later that evening, General Tatamachi and other officials arrive, having spent themselves examining the whole island and assessing the situation. The next day, soldiers are taught how to fire their weapons in a controlled environment. At this moment, the commander admonishes Saigo for failing to hit the target with his rounds and claims that he is kind of blind for failing to hit the target correctly. Saigo is being punished for his poor performance by being forced to polish all of the boots of his whole regiment. Following the drill, soldiers are marching through the village when General Tatamchi notices several locals walking around freely in the vicinity of the town. General Tatamachi even took note of a child who was playing near the location where combat tanks were being stored. He ordered the evacuation of residents as soon as possible. Lieutenant Colonel Baron Teikiki Nishi, a well-known Olympic gold medalist show jumper, meets General Tatamachi at the beach with his horse, and the two of them seem to be good friends. General Tatamachi and Colonel Nishi are having dinner together later that evening and are discussing the strategies for defense on the island with each other. The next day, General Tatamachi inspects the coastline and meticulously outlines the military strategy he has in mind for the island. He also performed a live demonstration of the assault on the Americans with the assistance of his aide, Fujita. Several other commanders, including Colonel Nishi, disagree with General Tatamachi's defense in-depth policy, which they believe is a mistake. General Tatamachi thinks that the United States will seize control of the beaches swiftly and that the mountain fortifications will have a greater chance of surviving. In the meanwhile, Japanese troops are being transferred to Mount Suribachi. Poor nutrition and filthy surroundings take their toll, many people, including Kashiwara, die as a result of dysentery. The caves are being used by the army as their shelter and planning to do survival strategy. A superior private named Shimizu takes over for Kashiwara when he reports for duty. Private First Class Saigo believes that Private Shimizu is a spy from the Kempeitai who has been ordered to gather information on disloyal troops. They are out early in the morning the next day in order to have a good meal. Saigo and his comrade Kashiwara are still not persuaded of Shimizu's allegiance to the organization. Saigo is also thinking back on his marriage at the moment. How difficult might his wife's life be if he were absent? Saigo distinctly recalls how he was picked to be a part of the war and how his wife was adamant that he not accompany her on the journey. Saigo revealed to his wife that he intends to die in the service of his nation with dignity. Saigo was just recently informed that his wife was expecting a child. Japanese soldiers continue to dig trenches outside the cave. They have been laboring non-stop to retake Iwo Jima since the threat of war on the island. Admiral Oshugi confronts the general about his intentions, and he expresses his strong opposition to fighting on the island if the US Army intends to conquer the country. Meanwhile, Colonel Nishi converses with General Tatamachi in the quarters as he is making plans for the battle. Colonel Nishi instructs him to keep a close check on Major General Hayashi, whom he believes is jeopardizing the safety of the soldiers. Then, American planes and warships began to emerge and attack the island, resulting in a high number of deaths among the civilian population. The U.S. troops have launched an assault on the island of Iwo Jima. General Tatamachi has received word that U.S. warships are in the waters around the island of Saipan. He gave the order to prepare the soldiers for the worst-case scenario. A few days later, Saigo and his other buddies are in the cave, cooking and enjoying the food they had prepared before. 
he is instructed to place the pot outdoors and to take good care of it, regardless of what occurs. His surprise at the overwhelming number of ships along the island's beach is understandable. Japanese forces open fire on the American Marines as soon as they arrive on Japanese soil. Weapons and tanks are in short supply in the Japanese army. Saigo's companion was struck by a bomb and suffered injuries to his arms as a result. A large number of American soldiers are killed and wounded, but the beach fortifications are rapidly breached, as General Tatamachi anticipated, and the onslaught is redirected to the positions atop Mount Suribachi. Saigo overhears General Tatamachi radioing instructions to retire to the Suribachi camp while presenting a request for extra machine guns from his commander to the Suribachi garrison. On the other hand, the commander refuses to listen to the general and instead orders his unit to take their own lives. Eventually, Saigo manages to flee with Shimizu, persuading him to continue fighting rather than give up. A captive marine is bayoneted to death, and they witness the killing of two more men, one of whom is burnt by an American flamethrower. While trying to flee with Lt. Col. Oiso in the middle of the night, Saigo and the soldiers on Mount Suribachi are ambushed by marines, who kill everyone except Saigo and Shimizu. They run to tight lines, but Lt. Ito accuses them of desertion as they arrive. He raises his gunto, threatening to execute them for cowardice, but Kuribayashi comes and saves Saigo once more by confirming Saigo's order to withdraw. The Japanese launch an attack on US positions, but they suffer heavy losses. Meanwhile, the survivors are instructed to reassemble with Colonel Nishi while Ito proceeds to the US lines with three mines, planning to plunge himself beneath a tank. Colonel Nishi engages in English-language conversation with a captured Marine named Sam until Sam succumbs to his wounds. Nishi is currently engrossed in a letter that he discovered in the cave. It came from the mother of one of the soldiers who had been killed. Later, everyone heard a loud bomb being dropped outside, and they were informed that they were being attacked once more. Unfortunately, flying debris struck Nishi in the eyes, causing him to become blind. Before his men leave him, Nishi orders them to withdraw and asks Lt. Okubo to leave him a rifle before they depart. Nishi remained in the cave, injured and alone, for a long time. When the soldiers are about to leave, they hear a gunshot coming from Nishi's cave. The colonel took his own life for the sake of honor. General Tatamachi, on the other hand, got another piece of bad news, more of his soldiers had been killed. The cave is now completely unsecured, and a large number of troops are preparing to flee. Meanwhile, Saigo has announced his intention to surrender, and Shimizu confesses that he was dishonorably removed from the Kempeitai because he refused to carry out an order to murder a civilian's canine companion. Shimizu is the first to escape and surrender to the Americans, but the guard is later shot and killed. Ito, who has become desperate and malnourished, collapses and surrenders when the US Marines arrive on the scene to help. They let him sip some water, and he was subsequently reunited with Okubo, another surrendery. They are shot and killed by US Marines not long after they have surrendered to them. Because of the large number of soldiers still on the island, the soldiers are continuing their fight against the Americans. Saigo discovered the bodies of the two men in their position. When they were on their way to meet up with General Tatamachi, he found his friend dead. Among the survivors of Mount Suribachi is Saigo, who is the only one who has survived. Meanwhile, preparations are currently in progress for a final attack. General Tatamachi received a phone call, which caused their conversation with Saigo to be cut short. He was listening to a song that was dedicated to the gallant men of Iwo Jima. General Tatamachi became emotional as a result of this. General Tatamachi instructs Saigo to remain behind and burn all papers, including his own letters, so sparing Saigo's life for the third time in as many days. That night, General Tatamachi launches a final surprise attack against the city. The general is gravely wounded, and the majority of his soldiers are slain, but his devoted aide Fujita takes him out the following morning. Fujita is ordered to behead General Tatamachi by General Tatamachi. On the other hand, Fujita is killed by a marine sniper before he can complete his mission. Meanwhile, it appears that Saigo has buried some of the papers and letters rather than burning them all, as originally planned. The general orders Saigo to bury him in an undiscovered location, then pulls his handgun, an American M1911, a present from the United States given to General Tatamachi before the war, and commits suicide by shooting himself. Saigo then buries him alive in the dirt of Japan, tears streaming down his face. Fujita's body is discovered later by a US patrol. One of the Marines finds General Tatamachi's handgun and tucks it beneath his belt for safekeeping. They investigate the area and come upon Saigo, who is holding a shovel. When Saigo notices the weapon in the Marine lieutenant's belt, he gets enraged and launches a shovel attack on the American soldiers. 
He is knocked unconscious and carried to the prisoners of war beach because he is too weak to fight. As he is being wheeled away on a stretcher, he notices the setting sun and grins glumly. The movie ends in 2005 when the archaeologists have finished their excavation and discovered the bag of letters that Private First Class Saigo had hidden. They then open the bag of letters. As the letters pour forth, the voices of the Japanese troops who pen them can be heard echoing in the background. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this and help the channel grow.